I've been looking at the insurance policy for this Sherbert. It's due in the Thames tomorrow night. Premium is higher, but I see the sum insured is 50,000 pounds. No, frankly, Butty, I'm a little worried. Worried, Sir William? Yes. Looking at the specifications, I see that she was first constructed on the Mississippi in 1889. All timber construction, and she's powered by a coal-fed burner. Hence the fire hazard must be high. No doubt that's why the premium is so high. Hmm. The actuary probably knows his business, but I'd like a special fire guard on board while she's here. Shall I get in touch with the London Fire Brigade? No, 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 no. No, we must engage someone privately. Ring up this number. Grosvenor 5995. And make an appointment for me to see a man called Aubrey Mason. Their offices are at 33 Half Moon Street. Enjoy the best of both worlds. Only two hours drive from Johannesburg and Pretoria and half an hour by air. The magnificent Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park, just 10 kilometers from the Pilansburg Game Reserve and Sun City Resort. It offers an exciting escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Reasonable rates, excellent food, friendly service and comfortable air-conditioned rooms. It will ensure a memorable stay. Activities include tennis, squash, horse riding, the lion park, and much, much more. Call now to make your reservation on 014-573-1000. That's 014-573-1000. Or visit their website at www.restonations.co.za forward slash Sundown Ranch. The Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park. Two worlds in one. Looking for space to hang and dry your washing? Washline distributors have the solution. Their rotating and fold-down wash lines take up the smallest spaces. Ideal for townhouses, simplexes and balconies at affordable prices. Galvanized or powder coated and available in five different colors. For 24-hour delivery, installation, reliable and friendly service, phone Washline Distributors on 011-792-2486. That's 011-792-2486. Wash lines for every space and need. Sir William Hedges was well known to me. He is in fact a member of my club. Knowing that he was concerned with a big insurance company in the city, and much of our work is connected with this type of company, I wasn't surprised when he arrived at 33 Half Moon Street requesting the services of an operator. His story, however, was interesting in the extreme. Well, it's the first time I've seen you in your office, Mason. <laughs> Quite an interesting setup you have here. Tell me, do you make good your boats to do anything, anywhere, at any time? We most certainly do, Sir William. Oh, well, you have confidence, if nothing else. Well, what is it you want us to do? A man in the United States has hit upon rather a good idea. At least I think it's a good idea. He's bought an old Mississippi showboat and had it towed across the Atlantic. His intention is to sail this old craft up the Thames, putting on modern entertainment in an old-fashioned setting. Hmm. Well, it, it is a good idea. Yeah. Well, naturally, the showboat is heavily insured, mainly against fire. As you know, these old boats are built of timber, and the boilers are steamed with, with, with coal bunkers. I wouldn't normally be worried, but I, I, I think the man will probably make a fortune. But I have investigated the owner. And I've discovered that he is a small-time racketeer and gambler. Oh. Well, that does put a different complexion on things. Oh. Well, I may be wrong, of course. But I want a man on permanent fire duty just to keep an eye on things. Will there be any objection from this American? Uh, what's his name, by the way? Seamus Camber. No, there will be no objection. In fact, it's written into the Articles of Insurance that we can have a man permanently on board in a supervisory capacity. Oh, then it's quite straightforward. One of my senior operators is an American, so he should get on well with his owner. Well, excellent, excellent. Yes. When and where do you want him to report? Uh, this time tomorrow at Gravesend Dock. We'll have no trouble in finding the showboat. Uh, I expect it'll create quite a stir sailing up the River Thames. He'll be there, Sir William. His name's Cannon, by the way. You need have no fears about his ability. 
He's what the Americans refer to as a, a very tough baby. <laughs> Got on, yes. <laughs> well, if there is anything phony about Mr. Seamus Camber, you may rest assured that Cannon will sort things out for you. Anybody on board? I guess with you, Buster. What are you doing on board my ship? Well, I didn't come for a conference with Mark Twain. Very, very fine. Are you one of the comedians on next week's show? My name's Cannon. I represent the North London Insurance Company. If you find anything funny about that, have a good laugh. And what does the insurance company want with me? They have a sizable interest in this old river boat. I'm here to protect that interest. You, I take it, are Mr. Seamus Campbell. Uh -huh. That's right. What are you going to do on board? Well, mosey around after people and see they stub out their cigarettes on the tap room. In short, Mr. Camber, I'm here to protect your showboat against the ravages of fire. I've got my own fire protection. I don't need any more help. Oh, don't worry, friend. I'm for free. All expenses paid by Sir William Hedges. It's written in the insurance clause that the company can provide an extra guard. I'm it. Okay, but don't get in my hair. I got a show to put on here the night after next. I don't want any of my customers upset by an insurance watchdog. Not so right. I promise to close a blind eye to the poker games and the Shaman de Fer. What gives you the idea I'm going to run a gambling joint on board this tub? Well, you're not going to run dollars in for the ship's log, that's for sure. Now, where's the crew anyway, or do you stoke up those fires yourself? The crew comes aboard tomorrow, Smarty. Meantime, you and I can rest nice and cozy on board. So you can take it easy, Mr. Cannon. If anybody sets fire to the showboat, it can only be you or me. As I said before, Sir William Hedges is well known to me. Since I had already dispatched Cannon as car guard on the showboat, I was naturally a little surprised at the request from a gentleman who arrived the following morning in my office. He was announced by Miss Fairweather. Uh, Mr. Duke Delaney to see you, sir. What's it in connection with, Miss Fairweather? Something about a guard on board a showboat. Is he from the North London Insurance Company? I don't think so, sir. By his accent, he's an American. Delaney? Duke Delaney, sir. Are you sure it's not a Mr. Camber? Quite sure, sir. Well, all right, show him in. Mr. Delaney? That's right, sir. Oh, do come in. Oh, thank you. Have a chair. Thank you. I understand from the switchboard girl that you're connected with Mr. Seamus Camber's showboat. Now, in a way, yes. I have certain fixtures and fittings on board which are on loan to Seamus Camber. Since they are on loan, I wanted the services of a man to, well, to keep an eye on things. Are you concerned with theft or fire, Mr. Delaney? Oh, fire, mostly. I'm getting to understand that the old Mississippi showboats are anything but stable. In fact, I was reading a report the other day where in 1913, two showboats engaged in a race up the river blew up. Well, surely it's not Camber's intention to race up the River Thames. Uh, I mean, what would, well, what would he race against? Uh, this is the only showboat in England. Uh, I'd like to be quite frank with you, Mr. Mason. Seamus Camber doesn't enjoy the greatest reputation for honesty in the States. Then I'll be equally frank with you. The vessel is insured by the North London Insurance Company, and they have already engaged the services of one of my operators, who is at this moment on board the showboat keeping a watch against fire. Is he reliable? Thoroughly. Oh, then there's little point in my engaging anyone, is there? Well, perhaps if you gave me a list of the furniture and effects that you have on board the ship, I could have my man keep a special eye on them. I'm really interested in the prints in the smoker room, have you ever been on board a showboat, Mr. Mason? No, I haven't. Oh. Well, it's traditional that the smoker room is decorated with the prints of paintings by the great masters. In the Helsinkin days of the gold rush, they had real paintings on the wall. Well, in later days, they were substituted for prints. Now, the ones on board the River Queen have little commercial value, but now well, they hold great sentimental attachment for me. If anything should happen to the boat, I'd be most grateful if your man could rescue those prints and bring them to the office here. You know, Mr. Delaney, I never met Seamus Camber. He must be quite an interesting gentleman. Yet I feel that, well, although he's generally at loggerheads with the law, he doesn't strike me as a practical proposition to tell an old showboat 3,000 miles across the Atlantic, well, just to set fire to it for the insurance. <laughs> Camber's mind works in devious ways. I hope that his intentions for once are of the best, however. 
Now, if your man can keep an eye on the prints for me, I'll be most grateful. And, of course, happy to pay any reasonable fee. Very well, Mr. Delaney. I'll see that Cannon is instructed in that regard. Ah, oh, thank you. That's put my mind at rest. I'm glad to hear it. But it's more than I can say for Cannon and Seamus Camber. <laughs> Who's there? Well, that's clear. Camber said he and I were the only two people on board. Where did that come from? Uh huh. That was in this cupboard. Oh! Now, what are you doing in here? Are you Mr. Campbell? No, I'm not. I'm the ship's guard. I repeat, what are you doing in here? I didn't want to be seen, and when I heard someone coming, I thought I'd hide in the cupboard. What are you hiding from? And who are you, anyway? I'm Constance Maston. American? From Connecticut. Okay, give. I came on board to have a look around. I'm in show business, and I heard that Seamus Campbell was engaging acts for the showboat. Well, Seamus Campbell's topside right now. Come with me. I'll take you to him. Oh, not right now. Well, there's no time like the present. I'd rather right not go right away. I, I heard tell that Campbell has an unsafe reputation. You know something? I'm beginning to stack my chips on this guy's table. Nobody has a good word to say for him, and yet his business seems legitimate enough. If you're from Connecticut, you must have a work permit to perform on this showboat. Maybe you'd like to show it to me, huh? I haven't got it with me. Passport? Why all the questions? Look, baby, it's all the same to me whether you answer my questions here or in the local cop shop. Can't you give me just an hour? You know... I have an idea that you stowed away on this tub and got yourself a free tour across the Atlantic. That being the case, I want you investigated by the cops. Uh, nothing personal, just part of my duties as the guard around here. Hey, Cannon! Come on up here! Okay, Mr. Camber. Hey, you, come back here! What's going on down here? I'm locked in. I'm here in the smoker room. Oh, how did you lock yourself in here? A broad lock, man. A broad? What broad? You been out of your mind? We are the only two people on board this tub. Look, Mr. Campbell, that door was locked from the outside. Check? Check. Then how do you figure I locked myself in from the outside? Yeah, that makes sense. The door was locked from the outside. Well, she was in here, hiding in a cupboard. Here, on the shovel. That's what I said. <laughs> You, you must be crazy. Look, crazy or not, there was a doll right here in this cupboard. Come over here. Come here. Now take a deep breath. Yeah. Perfume. That's right. And I don't use that particular brand. Of well, what's a girl doing here? I don't know, Mr. Cameron. But I've got a funny feeling that there's an awful lot of people who'd like to see your enterprise grow up in smoke. And that's no maybe. <laughs> following classic Springbok radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. New Pepsodent has Erlium, an amazing discovery that actually polishes teeth so sparkling clean and white, dulling film can't find a hole. Feel the difference with your tongue. You wonder where the dullness went when you polish your teeth with Pepsodent. New Pepsodent, the white toothpaste you can feel working. Some things in life are obvious and easy. If you have a business providing a good service or selling a product, you need to let people know. But how do you do that? Easy. Just tell them here on SpringbokRadio.com. Internet radio is about talking to people in their own homes. Your message becomes part of the sound they've chosen to listen to. To find out more about advertising on springbokradio.com, contact Dave Dupria on Johannesburg 011-678-5176 or for outside South Africa, 27116785176 or email dave at springbokradio.com. Everyone, it seemed, was apprehensive over the intentions of Mr. Seamus Camber, one-time gambler and racketeer from the Bronx. However, to all outward appearances, 
Mr. Camber was conducting his affairs in an honest and straightforward manner, and I could find no real cause for alarm. Two days later, prompted with pertinent advertising, the showboat got on its way up the River Thames, loaded with sightseers and the party spirit. The vessel was now fully crewed, steam was up in the boilers, and a good orchestra pounded out lively music to an enthusiastic audience in the smoke room. Having inspected the ship's furnaces and found everything in order, Cannon was relaxing at a table in the corner. Hello, Cannon. Everything in order? Apple pie order, Chief. How about the boilers? Well, Camber has a crew of Alaska firemen who seem to know their job, and uh, he's running on half steam. Hmm. So Sir William's fears were groundless. Looks like it. Have you seen Duke Delaney? The man who owns the prince? No. Why is he so worried about a few prints anyway? Well, there's no accounting for taste. Anyway, you have your orders. If anything should happen on board, you must first ascertain the cause of the trouble, then rescue his prints and get them ashore into our office. Okay, got it. Why, Mr. Mason, I didn't expect to see you here. Hello, Mr. Delaney. Well, looks as though you're fear for us. I hope you're right. Now, I don't think you've met my senior operator, have you? Cannon, meet Mr. Duke Delaney. How do you do? Well, nice to know you, Mr. Cannon. How are the boilers? No, oh, just great. You know, maybe Camber's got something after all. This is just like the old days on the Mississippi River. Oh, not that I remember them. Oh, too long ago for me, but... Well, I figured that this gimmick will go down big with the Londoners on the Thames. Hi there, gentlemen. Having a good time? Just great. Shouldn't you be fire-watching? Well, there's not much to worry about on board this ship, Mr. Cameron. Uh, are these friends of yours? Uh, this is my chief, Aubrey Mason, and uh, Duke Delaney, you already know. Ah, uh, see you later, fellas. I, uh, I just spotted a particular friend of mine. Who did you say the last one was? Hey, that, uh, from your that girl up there, Sam. Yeah. Oh, you like her? <clears throat> I engaged her yesterday. What name did she give? Connie Maston. Why? Well, that's the girl who locked me in this smoker room the day before yesterday. Oh, you don't say. What's all this about, Campbell? Well, Mr. Campbell here and myself were the only two people on board the River Queen the day before yesterday, and I came down into the smoker room here, and, well, I found that girl hiding in a cupboard. Well, did she give you any explanation? She, she said she was in show business and was looking for a job on the show. That's right, and like you see, she got the job. Um, look, Mr. Camber, I, uh, I know it's maybe none of my business, but uh, have you ever met that broad before? Never saw her before in my life. What are you worried about? So she came aboard for a job and she got the job. <sighs> There's something funny about this setup, and I wish I knew what it was. Look, buddy, somebody told you I got a record back in the States? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Well, for once, my business enterprise is on the level. Real level. Now don't you forget it. Well, that's my cue. Stick to your job, Cannon, and I'll stick to mine. Okay. Well, well, well. You seem to have upset the gentleman. But there is something funny about this setup, Chief. Well, when Mr. Campbell's around you, you should keep your ideas to yourself. Chief, uh, who hired the uh, furniture and effects to Seamus Campbell? Duke Delaney. Well, that's why I wanted you to... Of course. When you introduced me, you also introduced Delaney, and Cameron didn't know him. So now you think there's something funny. Well, it is rather odd, isn't it? Camber doesn't know the man from whom he hired the prince on the wall, but he does know the girl who was stowed away on his ship and is now working in his cabaret. I'm going down to take another look at those boilers. I think that maybe if we're not careful, we'll have a problem on our hands that's too hot to handle. Cameron inspected every inch of the showboat, but could find nothing wrong anywhere. He began to think his fears were groundless, and that the Camber Enterprise well, was in good faith after all. His misgivings would have returned with alacrity, had he been able to overhear a conversation between Camber and Delaney just before midnight, when the cabaret was ended and the gambling began. The mysterious Constance Maston was sitting with them at a table in the now empty smoke room. Camber was flushed with the evening's entertainment. Well, I don't mind telling you, Mr. Delaney, this is the first legit enterprise that I ever attempted. I don't want you to think I'm boasting when I say it's been successful beyond my wildest hopes. Well, it's not the first time a camera's gone straight. Well, gambling's legal in this country. Uh, you, uh, you mean you still have a brother? Oh, not on board the River Queen. This is strictly for entertainment. <laughs> I must compliment you on the entertainment. Oh, Connie, yeah. best find I ever made. Why, thank you, kind sir, she said. 
That uh, watchdog for the insurance company, Cannon, had some crazy notion that he had met you two days ago. He's crazy. Yeah, seems like everybody's slightly crazy on board this tub. Tell me, if gambling's not in your line, how come the poker game up on the bridge? Oh, just for my personal friends. Uh, you interested? Yeah, I like a game now and again. Anything in mind? Anything in name? Pinochle? Ah, I wasn't thinking of small stakes. I had something bigger in mind. Uh, such as? Uh... Like I was wondering if you could get 20 knots out of this old tub. Oh, just a matter of steam, yeah. Gentlemen, smoke your let off steam in the bar. It might be safer. Yeah, I guess it would at that. You'd lose your money anyway, Shannon. What money? Success has gone to your head. <laughs> I'll wager five thousand dollars that this old tub can't do twenty knots. Have nothing to do with it, Mister Carroll. Why, only did you say five thousand dollars? I did, and what's more, I got it right here in hard cash. I uh, covered. Please, Mister Campbell. Remember when the River Queen was built? Now, what do you think my ship is a dowager? You're on. Oh, no. Why are you so worried, Miss Master? Oh, forget about her. This is my ship. $5,000. Is it for 20 knots? Yeah. Huh? My money's on the table. Okay, okay. Let's get down to the engine room. Come on, you monkeys. Get the coal on the first. What's your reading, Johnny? Fifteen knots. You won't go any faster. Come on, steam, steam, steam! Give me more steam! Hey, what's going on down here? Smoke's coming out of the stack like the whole ship was on fire. Oh, Mr. Cameron, thank heaven you've arrived. Mr. Cameron has a crazy bet with you, the lady, that a showboat will reach twenty knots. Twenty knots? Have you gone out of your mind? Hey, you keep your nose out of this! Get that coal on the furnace! There's a $50 bonus for each and every one of them to make 20 knots on the game, uh, right? uh, Mr. Campbell, listen to me. Those boilers are old. They can't take that measure of steel. Delaney laid the bet, and I'm going to win it. Once a gambler, always a gambler. But what about the insurance if anything goes wrong? There's nothing in the article that says I can't sail my ship at any speed I like. But if something goes wrong, your business goes with it. Uh, I can always pick up another showboat. Don't kid yourself. If this old cub founders, you'll never get another holiday maker within 10 miles of a showboat. He's right, Mr. Campbell. But I stand to lose 5,000 bucks. You'll lose your boot. If you carry on, uh, where is Delaney anyway? He's in the wheelhouse. Tell me something, Mr. Camber. Have you ever met Duke Delaney before tonight? Oh, I never did, but he challenged me, and nobody's going to say that Seamus Camber, chicken on a bed. Hey! Oh! Look, you'll never live to collect that wager if you don't chicken out of here right now. Come on, baby, leave this crazy guy. Come on. Get into a boat. Where are you going? Smoke over. Got some unfinished business to attend to. I was right over the boiler house. I'll be quick like a bunny. So you got here at last. Delaney. What sort of crazy bet was that to lay with Camber? You knew he wouldn't refuse. If he doesn't make 20 knots, I'd get 5,000 bucks. Look, if you know what's good for you, you get out of here fast. Yeah, but what about my prince? We're still afloat, aren't we? Don't forget I paid you to look after them. If anything happens, to will be showboat. I'm taking them right now. Right. See you in your office later. Cannon! Cannon, hurry! <laughs> Where's Campbell? Campbell, where is he? Here I am. Right here. Well, what did the Laskers say? You're right, Cannon. Those, those boys are bucking at the seams. The crew's already in the longboat. Okay, join them. You too, baby. What are you going to do? Look for Delaney. He's already left in the dinghy. Well, that wraps it up. Come on, lower away! What's the time, Miss Maston? A quarter of four. Well, what's keeping him? He'll be here. I only hope he doesn't get tough. Well, that's where you and me differ, Miss Marston. Nothing will give me greater pleasure than to personally teach Duke Delaney a lesson. Ah, oh, that's probably him now. Miss Marston, go into the inside office with Cannon. You know what to do when he claims the prince. I know. Come on, Cannon. Come in. Oh, morning, Mr. Mason. Oh, come in, come in. Oh, nice of you to wait up for me. The service is our motto. Did, uh, did Cannon get the prints over to you? Yes, he did. Not damaged, I hope. No, not damaged. There they are on the table over there. Oh. If you just look at them and, uh, well, see that they're in order. Sure. Yeah, just as well I heard, your man. I had a feeling that that guy, Seamus Campbell, would sink that showboard. Are they your prints, Mr. Delaney? Yep, they're mine. As you say, in perfect order. Good morning, Mr. Delaney. Well, if it isn't Connie Maston and Cannon... Well, uh, nice to see you again. Not for long, Duke Delaney. I have a warrant here for your arrest. Uh, you got a what? I have to warn you to come quietly. 
Quietly. You heard the lady. Has this torch singer gone out of her mind? Not a torch singer, Duke Delaney. Special Officer Constance Marston of Interpol. Janice Camber, whom everybody suspected of double dealing, was in fact a reformed criminal whose intentions with this showboat were of the best. It was Duke Delaney who was the nefarious operator in the woodpile. Delaney had substituted two of the smoke room prints with genuine oils stolen from a wealthy American collector. He knew that he could never get them through customs, but they could be removed in an emergency from a sinking ship. He played on Seamus Camber's love of gambling, knowing that the old boilers on the showboat would never stand up to such a head of steam. Cannon, therefore, inadvertently brought the paintings ashore for him, but he reckoned without Constance Maston, who was on his track from the very beginning. She, too, suspected Camber at first, but Delaney overplayed his hand and walked right into the trap we prepared for him. 